why can't I show my tits and have an opinion? <laughs> Women are still not paid equally. So many parts of the world, women do not have the right to vote still. I reckon I'm more ambitious now than I ever have been. For International Women's Day, David Jones brought together some of Australia's most influential women to talk about what it really means to be a woman in today's society. I love when women get together and talk about things. We could literally solve any issue there is in the world. The reality is that every woman has something to bring to the table. Being surrounded by great women to talk about things that matter. Can't get enough of that. I'd like to see women take leadership positions. It's not until women take on those positions that we're actually going to be able to change the status quo. It was a chance to actually learn for me. I adore Gretel. I'm relishing the chance to have a good chat with them. So how would you define yourself? I'm dangerously ambitious. I came from a very normal family in Canberra. I had been no nepotism in my career, so I've had to do everything and I think I'm... But I say dangerously ambitious and independent in that sometimes I need to ask for help, which is a long conversation I had with my husband on the way here today, actually. <laughs> it's, I just do everything, I do everything, I do everything, and then I collapse. And usually it's at that collapse point where it's like, well, why didn't you just ask for help? We're, yeah, our own worst enemies, and I am. I'm terrible. I just think I can do it all, and I absolutely cannot do it all. But I think that is what happens, it's just like, I, I don't want help, I don't want help. And then all of a sudden it's like, nobody helps me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, I, I relate to everything. that. For a lot of women, it, it can be difficult to own up to being ambitious because often people will give you a hard time because no, as a woman, you can't be ambitious, you should just be happy with this. Whereas for a bloke, it's encouraged that they are ambitious. And, and to me, sometimes the word ambition can have a negative connotation. I don't think it does, but I think it's, it's that sense of you'll do anything, anything it takes yeah. and you don't care who you trample as you do that. Setting benchmarks for yourself mm. and, you know, dreaming big and, you know, and having the ambition to actually want to make that giant leap. Yeah, so I see it in a, as a really positive mm. sort of but is it thing and it's something that, you know, it should be just ingrained in all of us mm. to, yeah. to have that innate sort of ambition to just want to succeed at whatever we decide mm. to do. I have an immense amount of ambition for what's possible in life and our careers are the only things we own and this is why it's important, you know. Um, we, you know, we share our parents with siblings mm. and we, you know, we share our, you know, our children with our, you know, partners. Mm. Our, our careers are ours. And uh, we, we go about sculpting them out of a, a lot of dreaming of what's possible and what's out there in terms of up ahead that I, I've always dreamed of still do that? Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I'm, I reckon I'm more ambitious now than I ever have mm. been. Yeah. A lot of people more and more feel I should wear whatever I want. Mm. I'm wearing what I'm comfortable in, in it, without necessarily thinking the impact on others. But it is true that your clothes can have Because you're allowing yourself to be defined by something else. And, and that's, that's my view, is that you don't allow yourself to define yourself if you're making sure you're a statement. That's what's so great about style. Because exactly. you don't have to be defined. You can be whoever you want exactly. on any yeah. different day or how you but feel. But you wear your clothes as opposed to letting your clothes wear you. I mean, you see it as far more intrinsic and crucial than yeah, that, do you? Yeah, I mean, style has been a part of me and everything I've done since I've been a little girl. Like, since, you know, I used to dress in my father's overalls in this cane-cutting, you know, wardrobe. And it was, like, horribly wrong, but so right. <laughs> and I, I can't pretend to be somebody else. It's, it's just what I love and it's my creative self. Mm. And that makes me a better person all around, as a mother, as a friend. And so... I'm really proud of that. Jacinta, now you live in the world of fashion, mm. that is your career or portion of your career. Yes, yeah. Do you have the opportunity to express yourself individually or do you have to use current trends? What, what's your style? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's the beauty of style is it's every day you can choose to express yourself the way that you, you want to express yourself. I actually had this argument with a, a producer once and I got a call from my manager saying, you can't wear those kind of tops on TV when you're talking about such, you know, prominent issues. They show a little bit too much. And I said, why can't I show my tits and have an opinion? <laughs> 
you know? Why can't I be sexy and have an opinion? If I feel confident in something, I don't care about what someone thinks. I'm in this generation where we kind of go a bit against the rules sometimes and we don't actually care what you think. If we want equality, like, we should be able to do things the way we want to. I'm still respectful to myself. First of all, I have to say, my generation, if you wanted to be taken seriously mm -hmm. for your intelligence, you covered your body up and wore mm -hmm. a great big doona cover. Mm -hmm. Like, you were either smart yeah. or you were attractive and you couldn't have both. Mm -hmm. But it's one thing for... And I think your generation owes all credit to my generation mm -hmm. for forging the way to, for you to wear short skirts. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't mean that men respond the way that you want them to. And we're still in a world where men are possibly the ones who are employing you. Mm. Do you think they judge you as by what you're wearing? Until I open my mouth, yeah. I think I've been to a lot of meetings and I've sat in like boardrooms with executives of, of television and I've sat there and probably when I first walk in, they're like, oh, here we go, here's a doozy. And by the end of it, my manager always gets an email saying, wow, like she was, you know, that was really impressive, she could, she could talk. But I think I'm in a really unique position, whereas in, like, I, I'm not really in the corporate world. I sit outside of that and I've never had felt like I've had any struggle with, with making it in my industry because of my, my gender and I've never felt like there's a glass ceiling, like I probably earn more than the average Australian man does doing what I'm doing. So I'm in a different bracket and I also had a stay-at-home dad and a working mother. So I kind of go against the grain in a lot of things and that doesn't mean that I think that, you know, equality is where it needs to be. I think it would be really ignorant for me to sit here and go, no, every girl should rock up to a business meeting in like a low-cut thing. Like that's, it's worked for me, but I think you've got to find that. You've got to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like I, I do, I see like a, a lot, you know, like I, my situation is unusual. So sometimes I find it hard when I'm sitting on like these panels and with women saying, you know, I really had to fight for to get equal pay or, or this because I haven't experienced that, but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate it. We do forget how, I mean, how far we still have to come as women, but also um, the enormous gains that have been made for women of our generation, thanks to my mum. And, and sort of her mother, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's so much that we do take for granted. And I, and I think we still have to do more. I mean, women are still not paid equally. Um, so many parts of the world, women do not have the right to vote still, to travel, to go to school. And I think it's about choices too. And I think it's not really ever gonna change until we change the mindset, till we change the culture, and until we have women representing other women mm. at all levels, mm. women as leaders. Mm. I think if we, you know... But we... men supporting that, yeah, I and think. That's because right, yeah, we can't, can't be in isolation. Yeah, it's not that you have to leave your work early to, to do this, it's because your husband won't leave his job early, and not saying yours specifically, yeah. so somebody has to, we'll, so we'll do it. Yeah. So, you know, so I wouldn't mind just a little bit more reversing <laughs> in a, you know, a playful way to say to a guy, if you're gonna walk into a meeting mm. looking like mm. that, well, and if they're going to sit there uh, with their suits on, you know, uh, with their beer bellies and all of that, well, you better be making money. You know, like, like if, mm -hmm. if we're going to pin these expectations on what each gender has to deliver, mm -hmm. and if we've got to be, you know, these multitaskers that also have to be presentable in the world, mm -hmm. that also have to be, you know, all these other things, well, then it, if we're going to put that on you guys, if you business guys, you know, or, you know, show us. Are you, are you loaded? Yes. Or are you just yes. like, you're not loaded? What do you mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's put those expectations back onto them. Mm. I'm just wondering with you girls, what issues are important to you? We'll start with you. Mental health is, is a really big one. Um, it's been quite prominent in my life for the past three years. My dad also suffered severely from depression as well, so it's something that I grew up probably being unaware of, but then when I was a little bit older, I was, I was you know, made, made aware of it. So mental health is definitely, definitely a big one. That's a big commitment. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, what about you? Uh, issues you're passionate about? Oh, very much. Mental health issues. I feel very strongly too about supporting new mums, especially. Having um, had postnatal depression myself, I think for, you know, new mums there isn't enough support. For me, the opportunity is to change the way both male and female think in terms of thinking from the inside out and not the outside in. We are taking a lot from a very um, narcissistic 
material under you know valueless world and we're taking it inside and thinking this is what we need to take on and become and especially with the younger girls especially in Jacinta's generation the way Instagram profiles are run the way you know um, diet issues as you saw or, or eating disorders are starting to become such a big deal with 11 year olds for example we need to learn to to live from the inside out and we need to provide tools to both male and female to cope with building self-esteem to understand how the self-esteem is so core to your future and your self-confidence and your building of great relationships to learn empathy to learn emotion and to understand that it's all okay what about you Lisa? The issues of, of importance to you? But people would always, when I was on the other side of media, they'd always ask me the same old question, so I'd give them the same old story, which was kind of great for the spin and hype. And what I realised was that's not real and that's not what goes on. So I've made it my life's purpose through um, the collective to dig behind the scenes as much as possible and really tell kind of the story behind the story and the real stuff. So coming to that, I mean, a lot of this was driven. Like people say to me, why did you start this? And the reality is, I mean, we touched on it before, but through my 20s, um, I suffered a lot with um, mental illness and really most of my 20s, um, I was suicidal completely and utterly. And, um, and, you know, I've been through many iterations of different things. And so I just got to a point where I felt, well, if I can kind of use myself as some weird architect or conduit to kind of, you know, deal with a whole lot of issues, whether it be mental illness or all sorts of other things that we cover, then that's kind of my passion. And what about you, Kelly, with, um, with the magazine? Do you use that as an opportunity? Can you pursue issues with that or how uh, important? Absolutely, are they? absolutely. Um, women's health is a massive thing for me personally and the magazine. We do a big charity event with the Royal Hospital for Women every year, which is Bizarre and Bloom. It's a couture show. We raise lots of money for a fertility centre, which means women of all walks of life can access fertility treatment. But I'm also a breast cancer survivor, so I think. You know, I was very lucky. I had the best medical care that you can get in this country. And so for me, it's really important to, to keep working on those issues and to, and to talk about women's mm. health and, and to do lots of charity work, which is what I do. I didn't do charity work. I, you know, I've always sponsored children, but since having breast cancer, I, it has just been my goal that any extra time that I do have that I give back to the community. And, that, and that's by way of National Breast Cancer Foundation or a public hospital. It's interesting, isn't it, too, how it does um, kind of ground you and feed you at the same time when you do work like that? Yeah, I think so too, because I, you know, I, Harper's Bazaar, you know, I, I work in a very privileged bubble and I'm very aware of that. So I think, you know, a part of, part of the job spec is that I need to give back to the community. And that's the key because, you know, obviously having lost Savella made me very aware of giving back, very aware, because we sat there for five and a half weeks with day-to-day -day support from the hospital and from various psychologists and whatnot, but the truth is that it, it, it's crystallised to me what philanthropy means. Mm. And if you see anyone who's highly successful, that's exactly what they're doing. Mm. There are very few people who have lasting success without giving back. I'm very passionate about the shameful state of this country at the moment with our lack of policy mm. um, and our treatment of refugees. A big curveball here. I'm a very strong supporter of euthanasia and a right to finish your life mm. in a dignified way and in a respectful way and also education. I've done a lot mm. of work, philanthropic work around education, particularly with girls and women mm. in, what, in, in, under, what? in underprivileged, you know, mm. third world countries and what? our indigenous population as well because you can't look mm. at the whole, the mm. whole world. It's, it's too big, the problem's way too big so you've got to focus on just specific projects. There's never been a better time for anyone we can be assisted to have the lives that we want for ourselves, whether it be someone generous enough to donate an egg or science allowing us to do that, or women and conversations like these that can help us move forward in the direction of our dreams. And that's, you know, that's why these conversations are not only useful to us, but anyone that's watching this right now, it can be one piece of information that can make all the difference. And whether it's reaching out when you're suffering through postnatal or depression, or you know, infertility or whatever it is. It's, it's those things. We need to know that that information's there. And now with the internet and with all these fantastic forums that are not dependent on one person that's controlling what information's mm -hmm. going out there, we're able to get that information out there and get those results. What we're doing today is so powerful and the biggest, um, I think the biggest um, asset we have as women in reaching equality um, for us is, is the conversation, is each other. 
Like, I think we're so competitive, and this is what I find in my industry. It's like, you're almost unhappy when someone else is successful. And it's like, I see it all the time in my friendship group, and I just think what we have is so powerful. We need to get back to, I was watching the suffragettes actually on the way, the movie on the way to New York. And I thought they all stood together and they were a community of women who just wanted to do the best for each other. And I think we've really lost that. I agree. I think I, we've sometimes, really yeah, lost it. I think yeah. sometimes women are their own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. I, I actually do think, and that's why when you do have a really supportive bunch of girlfriends, mm -hmm. It's something very powerful about mm -hmm. that, who pick you up or you can throw any idea at them. Mm -hmm. or Because I think too, you know, when you are a busy working woman and you're a mother, there are lots of things that you need to download about. And mm -hmm. I think if you have a supportive network that doesn't judge you or, you know, then whispering to the next person, oh, you know, she's doing well at her job, but a marriage is shit. Yes. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. you know, the judgment. So I think it, there is a lot to be said for, you know, sticking together. <laughs> Girls, thank you so much. Perfect note to finish on. Thank you to all of you for being so open and honest and fabulous and uh, for joining us here at the table. <laughs>